following program is a production of Ho'ike Kauai Community Media. The Ho'ike Weekly has been made possible in part by the Rice Street Business Association, the Kauai Island Utility Cooperative, and Violi Properties. Aloha Kauai, I'm Trisha Allen, and part of my job here at Ho'ike is to tell you all about what's happening on our island. If there's an upcoming event or important info to share, you know you'll hear about it from us. But some stories deserve a little more time and care than others. The stories about people in our local community, about the love and aloha that's shared daily between all of us, can't always be summed up in a 90 second video clip, and now it doesn't have to be. Introducing Ho'ike's newest series, Kauai Voices. It's a show for our island featuring your stories. Our first episode is up now and it features a beloved landmark, lovingly dubbed the Skelly House. You can watch this episode and all future Kauai Voices episodes on our website, hoike.org. And if you don't have the seven and a half minutes it takes to watch the first episode, you can listen to it while you do other important things because all Kauai Voices episodes will be featured on the Ho'ike Studios podcast, which you can also find at hoike.org. Now that we got that covered, it's time to recap this crazy week we've had thus far, so buckle up, because this is the Ho'ike Weekly. All right, Kauai, it's news flash time, and I'm very hesitant using the word flash considering the fiery week we've had, but there's been a lot happening around here, even more than usual, and you still have things to do. So let's give you the latest in a short and entertaining way so you can go about your week informed. Last week, Thursday, a Robinson R-44 helicopter from the Ali'i Kauai Air Tours and Charters Company crashed in the waters off the Nepali coast with three people on board, one pilot and two passengers. Multiple agencies immediately began searching for the individuals aboard and recovered one passenger, Nicole Ru Ruark Quintua, pretty quickly. Unfortunately, she was already deceased. The other passengers aboard the helicopter, Nicole's husband, James Quintua, along with the pilot, Guy Croydon, were unfortunately never recovered despite rescue crews searching over 830 square miles for roughly 60 hours. The National Transportation Safety Board is said to be investigating the cause of the crash. Four days after the helicopter crash, another emergency situation requiring multiple agencies took place. On Monday, a large brush fire broke out between Hanapepe Heights and Kalmakani. Residents in Kalmakani were told to evacuate. Power lines that connected Westside residents to electricity were de-energized, and Kaumuli'i Highway was closed down completely while emergency crews tried to contain the thousand-acre fire. At 9.30 p.m., the fire was 60% contained and one lane of Kaumuali'i was opened. Traffic was severely backed up for hours as a result, with delays lasting from Lele Road in Hanapepe to the Waimea River. At 11.55 p.m., the brush fire was 100% contained and the evacuation notice for Kaumakani was lifted. Despite reports from Coconut Wireless that several buildings burned down only one structure, a shed that was not attached to any other structures, fell victim to the blaze, although the fire did come dangerously close. Just one day after that thousand acre blaze on the west side, another brush fire broke out, this time on the east side. A smaller 10 acre brush fire began around 12.15 on Tuesday and was quickly extinguished by 3.30 p.m. The Kapa'a Bypass Road and a portion of Olohena Road were closed for approximately three hours to make traffic a nightmare in the area for even longer. A preliminary investigation by the Kauai Fire Prevention Bureau revealed that the fire was caused by improper use of charging equipment consisting of a photovoltaic panel that was connected to a car battery. 
The most recent brush fire happened last night in Koke'e and is still underway right now. I was actually able to catch footage of the fire pretty early on from my driveway of all places. First thing I did, of course, was call 911. The dispatcher who answered assured me that emergency services were aware and that the situation was being taken care of. Throughout the evening, there were posts all over social media covering the progression of the blaze. I know I definitely posted quite a few Instagram lives through Hoike's account. And honestly, the only reason I was able to catch the footage I did was because I live right there in Kekaha. The county also issued updates with the latest ones saying that air assets joined the efforts this morning. And an update from the county at 8 a.m. stated that the fire wasn't fully contained, while an update around 1226 informed us that they're de-energizing the Koke'e circuit immediately at the request of Kima and for the safety of all emergency response crews fighting the wildfire. And just before we started filming this, the county issued an evacuation notice for everybody up in Koke'e and Waimea Canyon. So check on your loved ones if they're up there. The Kauai Police Department is seeking the public's assistance in identifying a body that was found Thursday morning near Nawiliwili Harbor in an area known as Carter's Point. On Thursday, July 18th, officers responded to a report of human remains discovered in the area near Nawiliwili Harbor. Personnel from the Kauai Fire Department aided in retrieving the body, which was subsequently transported to the Wilcox Medical Center. The decedent's identity is unknown due to the advanced stage of decomposition. An autopsy has been scheduled to determine the cause of death. Foul play is not suspected at this time. Anyone with information about this incident is urged to contact KPD Dispatch at 808-241-1711. Those wishing to remain anonymous can provide information by calling Crime Stoppers Kauai at 808-246-8300 or by submitting a tip at their website cskawaii.org. As if all that weren't enough, a massive technological meltdown hit today, leaving employees of airlines, banks, hospitals, and emergency services around the world facing the dreaded blue screen of death. The global outage affected Microsoft systems, including Windows 365 cloud PCs, apps, and other services. The cause? A routine software update by cybersecurity company CrowdStrike malfunctioned, crashing systems worldwide. The impact was immediate and extensive and is affecting us too, all the way out here on Kauai. Flights were grounded this morning and so far the DMV is closed today as a result of the disruption. And the Department of Water is operating with limited access to online services. So if you're having a hard time with your tech today, might not be you this time. Well, Kauai, it's been a long week, but the weekend begins soon and there's never a shortage of things to do around here. So let's take a quick look at what events you can look forward to in the upcoming week. The Hawaii Children's Theater is wrapping up their Summer Stars program this week. I mean, next week. If you don't know what the Summer Stars program is all about, well, you're in luck. Watch this. The Summer Stars program at the Hawaii Children's Theater offers an enriching theater experience for children and teens during the summer. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Participants engage in various performing arts activities, including acting, singing, and dancing, while developing essential skills in a supportive environment. The program emphasizes creativity, teamwork, and personal growth through immersive and fun theater projects. At the end of the season, students showcase their talents in a final performance celebrating their accomplishments and newfound confidence. One, two, three, four. We 
we were lucky enough to have some of the Summer Stars students visit us in the Ho'ike studio, and you know we had to ask them all about the program. Here's what they had to say. Aloha Kauai, I'm Trisha Allen, and I am sitting with some stars in the Ho'ike studio. Well, technically, they are students at the Hawaii Children Theater's Summer Stars program. It's a really cool program that happens during the months of June and July, where kids go to learn techniques of singing and dancing and acting. And at the end of it all, they put on a nice performance, and this year's performance is Willy Wonka. So with us, we have Haley, Jackson, and Asher. Um, all three of you are in the upcoming performance of Willy Wonka, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, Haley, let's start with you. What character are you playing in Willy Wonka? I play Willy Wonka. <gasps> Ooh, so you're the title character. I am. Um, what did you enjoy most about playing this role? I enjoyed most about my role probably just how goofy the character is. Just like getting to really like put all my effort into being that silly, like larger than life person. Are you like that in real life? Yes. I yeah. Am. Okay. <laughs> I, I could see a little bit of that before we, the cameras started rolling. Uh, Jackson, how about you? What character are you playing? I am playing Charlie Bucket. Oh, look at that. So, Charlie Bucket, what did you like most about preparing for the role? I liked watching him come to life as well. I thought it was so sweet to see a little boy who's got nothing, doesn't have money. He eats the same meal just every night, but he's so kind to others, no matter what happens. Are you like that in real life? <laughs> the truth comes out on TV, no less. Uh, Asher, what role are you playing in the upcoming I performance? I am playing Mike TV. Ooh, Mike TV. So what did you do to get ready for the role? Um, well, I practiced my song for a little while for auditions, and I mainly got the role because Fia, my sister, mm -hmm. is playing my mother. Oh, is she kind of like that in real life for you? Uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of. A kinda, little bit? Kind of, not really. <laughs> So she plays your mom in the play. Um, well, that's kind of neat. I like that. Now, I have to say, for the people who don't know about the summer fun program at Hawaii Children's Theater, Haley, maybe you could tell us, what is a day in the life of a Summer Stars program student? A day in the life of a Summer Stars program student. We we'll probably start, so we start at one o'clock every day. Okay. And we start with a little morning circle, where like we get just like introduced, we get our little schedule, what we're doing for the day. And then we'll go into a vocal warm up with our vocal teacher, Mr. Lane. And then usually after that, we kind of split up. We'll get choreography work, some vocal work. And then usually around three ish, we start our like run through for the day. And we try to get one run through in. Don't forget about recess. And we have, yeah, and we have at, at three o'clock, we get a little lunch snack break. You definitely shouldn't forget about recess. Yes. That's the best part, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to know how long, who, who's been in Summer Stars or Hawaii Children's Theater the longest? Asher, how long yeah. have you been a student? Uh, about nine years. Wow, how old are you? Twelve. Wow, did you start when you were three? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh my goodness, so nine years. Uh, how about you, Jackson? I've been doing Summer Stars for three years now. Okay, and Haley? I'm two years. All right, so we've got longest, middlest, and shortest. Um, so good, I'm glad we sat you in the right order. What's been your favorite part? I'd like each of you to answer this, if that's all right. What's been your favorite part about the process, just kind of as a whole? Um, mine would probably be being able to hang out with my friends while doing a really fun summer stars theater activity. That's a really good reason. Definitely watching all of the emotions light up with all the characters and people that are in this show. The jobs that they're doing is great. All their emotions are spot on, and the dances and songs are just amazing. Everybody's pretty talented, huh? Yes, That's very cool. Yes. Probably mine would be just that like larger than life character. Everybody gets to play and how just like goofy the show is, and getting like really watch it like just spark to life. And I'm really excited to be in the theater next week to really see the full picture come together. That's a, I love that so much, and I know that you guys have obviously, since it's Willy Wonka, have been preparing by eating as much candy as possible, right? I mean, that goes I without wish. saying, or without saying. Um, is there a new skill or talent that you discovered about yourself while this year's Summer Fun program was underway? Anybody? Um, well, there's a new teacher, a couple new teachers, and I've just 
learn how to be working with all of them, like work with new people. Relationships. Mm. Yes. That is a really good skill. It's important to be able to work with different, all different types of people. You're going to do well if you know how to handle. Is it okay if I talk about what I learned my first year? Absolutely. Well, I never really knew that I was very comfortable on the stage. I just randomly signed up for Summer Stars one day, and when I got on the stage, I'm like, wow, this is fun. This is really fun. I like playing these characters. I like doing these dances. I like hearing the crowd go wild for it. That's pretty, so you learned something new about yourself in that first year. Asher, since you've been in uh, Hawaii Children's Theater, HCT, for the longest, what would you say, I mean, obviously you were very young when you started, what is the difference in you and your skill from when you started to now? Like, what would be the biggest difference, you think? Well, first of all, I was a baby, probably didn't really, wasn't very good. Right. But <laughs> also, all of the people around, like, in Summer Stars changed, so that really changed me as a person. Okay. How about you, Haley? Changing. I feel like, because when I first started, my first show was Suzical okay. in 2022, I think. Um, and I was like very shy, like I, did, I was not confident or anything on stage, but then as it is when I felt more confident, I'm a lot more confident with my voice and just like facial expressions and everything in total. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell, he says. So would you guys recommend Summer Stars to your friends for yes. next year? If you love acting, you'll love Summer Stars. Yes, okay. it's a great start. If you love anything to do with anything in theater, you'll love it. Being on stage, singing, singing dancing, dancing, anything. All right, what songs do you guys practice? For vocal warm-ups, um, there's well, always funny songs, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. There's one where it's uh, say rubber, baby, no, buggy, bumper. rubber, baby, buggy bumpers. bumpers. Can we get like a really little snippet of yeah. your vocal warm-ups? <laughs> one, two, two, three. Rubber, baby, buggy bumpers. 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 It's kind of a jam. Mm -hmm. It is kind of a jam. <laughs> you can tap your foot to it. Thanks for thanks so much for coming into the studio and telling us about the Summer Stars program. Um, I'm really excited for you guys. And Willy Wonka is coming up soon. So we'll have info on that as well. Thanks again, guys. Those kids are super adorable. Thank you again for coming in. Kaloa Plantation Days begins today, July 19th, and it runs through till July 28th. This annual festival commemorates the rich history and diverse cultures brought together during the Sugar Plantation area. Kaloa Plantation, founded in 1835, holds the distinction of being the first successful large-scale sugar plantation in the state of Hawaii. Workers from all over the world, China, Japan, Portugal, Puerto Rico, Korea, and the Philippines arrived, bringing with them a wealth of food, music, and traditions. These cultural exchanges significantly shaped Kauai's local culture, creating a unique melting pot appreciated by residents and visitors alike. The tradition of Kaloa Plantation Days began in 1985 with a sesquicentennial celebration marking 150 years of sugar production. The initial celebration featured a parade through Koloa Town and various festivities that were so well received, they became an annual event. This year's festival promises to continue the beloved tradition, scheduled, as I said, from July 19th till the 28th. The 2024 Koloa Plantation Days will honor Hawaii's cultural heritage through a variety of events. The festival will feature music, dance, and culinary delights that highlight the vibrant history and traditions of the community. Attendees can look forward to the opening celebration, which will include a Paniolo backyard barbecue at Koloa Village. For a complete list of events and times, visit koloaplantationdays.com. Also beginning tonight, Kauai Skate Ohana and Dreamland Skate Parks are joining forces with support from the County of Kauai, of course, to spruce up the Nawili Willy and Hanapepe State Park locations, and they want community feedback. So an open house outreach is planned for today, July 19th, and tomorrow, July 20th. Today's outreach will take place in Hanapepe Town at 5 p.m., and the event on July 20th will be held at Nawili Willy Beach Park at 2 p.m. They hope to engage with the community to gather information and ideas about the upcoming skate park designs for both locations. 
Also happening this Saturday, July 20th, a Kauai Island Craft Fair is set to take place from 8 a.m. till 2 p.m. at the Kauai Veterans Center in Lihui. The fair will showcase the essence of Kauai's craftsmanship, connecting visitors and locals with the vibrant artistic spirit of the community. Skilled Kauai artisans will be showcasing their locally handmade items, each with its own unique story. The indoor fair provides a comfortable setting, featuring friendly vendors who are dedicated to their craft. Wilcox Medical Center will host a Keiki Bike and Skateboard Safety Day also on July 20th from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. This event aims to teach children essential safety skills for biking and skateboarding. Families can look forward to a fun and educational morning focused on keeping Keiki safe while enjoying their favorite activities. For details, visit the events page at hawaiipacifichealth.org backslash Wilcox. The County of Kauai Planning Department is launching the East Kauai Community and Circulation Plan and invites community involvement. The kickoff event, a family-friendly open house, will be on Thursday, July 25th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Kalu Kalu at 1624 Economic Resilience Center. Attendees will learn about the project's early findings and engage in discussions on the future of East Kauai. This plan, building on the 2018 Kauai Kako General Plan, aims to address the unique challenges of East Kauai and guide land use and policies through 2045. Community events and online engagement opportunities will be available throughout the planning process with a public draft expected in 2025. For more information about the East Kauai Community and Circulation Plan and the process, visit plankauai.com. Okay, let's end today's show on a bright note. In early 2024, Pacific Biodiesel announced its expansion of agriculture operations to Kauai, part of a federally funded project to develop a model for regenerative agriculture-based biofuel produced in Hawaii from multiple locally grown oil seed cover crops. The company's farming is for now being done on Gay and Robinson land and utilizes new as well as existing fields for oilseed cover crops in rotation with other food and fuel crops. If you remember, the Ho'ike Weekly told you about the company's inaugural 100-acre field of sunflowers in Kalmakani after we attended the blessing and planting on Earth Day way back in April. Well, now that first field is bloomed and we were invited back to see the sunny yellow fields for ourselves. Like last time, we hopped on a bus and took a short ride to easily one of the happiest fields I've ever seen. Lots of photos, pictures, and yes, some selfies were taken because how could you not? The project's model will include expanded production of culinary oils and other value-added food products, meal for animal feed, biodiesel, and co-products from biodiesel production, such as glycerin and potassium salt cake, which can be used as a non-petroleum fertilizer for local agriculture. Thankfully, this field is untouched after this week's brush fire, so Kauai can look forward to a very sunny yellow west side in the coming months. And behind me, that sunny sunflower field I was just talking about that was thankfully spared from the brush fire in Kalmakani, it's been behind me the whole time. Now, if you're listening on Hoike's podcast studio, they might be a bit smaller, but um, they are happy and bright and submitted by yours truly. I just couldn't pass up an opportunity to use this amazing footage. Plus, they make me smile. And after a week like this, I could use it. So hopefully, they make you smile too. And maybe we can all carry those smiles throughout the weekend. All right, Kauai, that's all the Hoike we have for you this week. I'm Trisha Allen, wishing you love and aloha. And don't forget to smile this weekend. <laughs> Ho'ike's president and CEO is Allegra Gaines. Administrative assistant, Leko Someda. Production and education services by Roger Olson. Production and IT services by Max Richardson. With news and events producer, Trisha Allen. Ike's board of directors include Chair Adam Reversi, Vice Chair Lexi Jones, Secretary Nathaniel Evslin, and Treasurer Jackie Kaina. Additional directors on the board, Leah Iwohi, Lori Barrett, Rod Green, Teak Rubiano, and Taylor Young.